Hello, and welcome to my series on how to install a shingle roof. This is part three, uh, where we're going to start showing you the shingle offsets, uh, nailing patterns, and we're going to get into starting our open cut valley. I'm going to start by installing a starter strip along the rake and the bottom. I'm going to start along the rake. I want a minimum of a half inch overhang past the rake. Uh, I went about a knuckle length, which is about three quarters of an inch. Most people will just overhang by approximately one knuckle. I then want to install a starter strip along the bottom with the cell sealing tabs down. Um, when I'm nailing this, I want to keep the nails uh, a little further down so as to give the eave a little bit more wind uplift. Um, we also want to make sure that the nail near the valley is a minimum six inches away from the middle of that valley. We don't want any fasteners within six inches of the valley. Now I'm going to install a small shingle on the rake tail. Uh, I want to overhang uh, that tail about three quarter of an inch on either side. So it is even with the rest of my roof. Also, uh, I will be putting mastic under this shingle. Uh, these have a tendency of blowing away, so I would recommend always um, putting mastic under your rake tail ends. Now I'm going to be installing my first full shingle. As you can see, it's already offset by my starters by about six inches. Uh, we wanna make sure it is offset from the starters. I'm going to put a nail either side on the white nailing line and then I need a nail from the right to be about 13 inches from the right of that shingle. My hatchet is about 13 inches so I put a nail hatchet length inside and a fourth nail between the nose. Now I'm going to go for about an 8 inch offset. Uh, different manufacturers will require different offsets. This one is fine from anywhere from a 10 to a 6. I'm going to install this shingle on the top of the cutouts or the top of the teeth to make it nice and straight and nails either side on the nailing line and then that hatchet length in to make sure we are not lining up on the keyways. Going to hatchet length in, make sure there's no nails within 3 inches where the shingles butt up why it's so important you go at least a hatchet length in. Now I'm going to cut off 16 inches to continue with my 8 inch offset. And again aligning to the top of the cutouts. Nails either side. And always making sure that that nail is at least 13 inches in. I then continue the stagger. Now you can see that my stagger is a little off from the 8 inches. The reason I went with an 8 inch is one, the 40 inch shingle gets divided up by 8 pretty well. It also means that because this manufacturer allows a smaller offset, if I screw my cuts up a little bit, that's just fine. Um, I can be a little bit off one way or the other and it's not going to make a significant impact. This also allows us to sort of eyeball everything and speeds up production. Now I'm going to get a fellow worker to help me chalk some lines for the valley. Uh, we have decided on this short piece just to do a four inch open valley. This is the minimum width that you would want your valley so that would be two inches either side for four inches total. We want to be making sure that there are no nails within six inches of the center of the valley and when we are cutting um, sometimes it's a good idea to use a scrap shingle underneath the shingle that you are cutting and this prevents you from accidentally nicking or scratching the valley metal. We are then going to continue to build up, making sure that we are keeping our nails six inches away from the center of the valley.
Remember, when you're using a scrap piece of shingle to cut with, make sure that that scrap piece of shingle remains scrap and is not used in the roof as it'll tend to have little nicks and cuts in it. And we have also cut off the top of that shingle in order to make sure that water does not track in off the top of the shingle. Again, we're gonna make sure that that nail is 13 inches back. On this shingle here, we do not have to make that little cut because that shingle is already short at the top. And therefore we already have our little missing triangle. Okay, let's talk about nails and nailing requirements. RCABC requires either hot dip galvanized or stainless steel roof and nails be used. The nails should be long enough to penetrate into the sheathing by a minimum of three quarters of an inch and should be nailed straight and flush. It should not be proud, overdriven, or crooked. In the event that we have installed a nail without a good bearing, or in this case crooked, that nail should be removed, the hole filled with mastic, and then another fastener placed nearby. In the event that a nail has been put into an exposed portion of the shingle, or if a nail has been placed where the next course will line up with it, um, within three inches of the keyway, now we must simply remove that shingle and replace it with a new one. Okay, well that just about covers part three. Uh, join us again for part four where we'll be doing a curb install with apron, step, and back pan flashings. Uh, I hope you like this video and have a good day.